Hello, uh, I'm David Perry. Um, mostly, most of the projects I work on don't have microchips in them. Is anyone else in the same boat? Anybody? Well, if anybody is, uh, I'd love to talk to you. Uh, I think we're in the minority. Um, I live here in Portland, Oregon. Thank you all for coming to visit. Um, it's a pretty awesome city. Um, I made, I designed, and 3D printed this electric violin. Um, it sounds all right. You'll get to hear it. Um, and it, yeah, you, yeah, thank you. So it, it was published in March 2014. It became fairly popular, uh, and I pretty quickly found myself in the position of cultivating and managing a community around an open source hardware project. Um, in 2013, right when I was wrapping this up, um, <clears throat> Michael Weinberg, in his talking in the summit, I was live streaming it, and he said that what we need to do is focus not on uh, licenses, but more on the infrastructure norms, highlights, and rewards within our projects and our communities. Uh, so I took that to heart, and I want to share with you what I've done and some things that I learned. The right. Yeah. I clicked it. I pushed it. Okay. Hey. Okay. It's printed in three parts. There's a neck, there's a rear, there's a bridge, and then there's some guitar parts and strings. There are pickups, um, and I'll play a song. So what I'm going to play is an Irish tune called Drowsy Maggie. Thanks. All right. So right now in open source hardware, um, there's, it, we're, we're pretty niche. There's not a lot of like mainstream knowledge of open source hardware. Uh, and you know, it's kind of cool. I kind of like that. Um, but I, I want to imagine a future where people, your average person, has heard of open source hardware. Um, where products that are out in the market use open source chips and not chips um, on, a, on a more regular basis. Um, the certification that was announced today, that's something that's going to be really useful in that world, uh, in a part as consumer protection and also um, <clears throat> for norms within the open hardware community. So how do we get from where we are now uh, I think where most projects fail, not due to licensing, but due to not having engaged communities, how do we get from where we are now to this future where open hardware is common and wonderful? And that's with focus on our communities and on the infrastructure, the norms, and what I'm going to call the feedback mechanisms, uh, which includes highlights and rewards of those communities. So they... The communities that form, nobody's necessarily paying people. Folks are self-selecting to participate in these projects. And what that means is that they're intrinsically motivated. Their inner desire to participate is causing them to join projects and be in communities. Um, there's a great book by Daniel Pink called Drive. Uh, and the three elements that really maximize um, intrinsic motivation are autonomy, mastery, and purpose. So you're going to see those a lot uh, on these slides. Um, and I, mostly you're going to see them because I want you to remember them. So we'll start with norms. These are expectations of participants in the community, uh, both 
what maybe I am expecting of participants as well as what they can expect of me and of others. In the world of 3D printing, at least, this is largely uh, how you do most of your norms. This license isn't, isn't great protection, not legal protection, but it lets everybody know kind of what I'm expecting, uh, what I'm expecting them to do. You'll notice I did say non-commercial, and I had a clause where I said, if you'd like to use this for profit, you know, send me some money, and if you want to use it to market your product, please get in touch. Um, I, that didn't work. Um, I didn't make any money. I actually lost money from trying to do that. Um, and companies I didn't like still used the fiddle for their advertising. So I will be removing that uh, so that I can apply for the certification, uh, if for no other reason. The other thing that the non-commercial clause does is it, it prevents some people from joining that community. So I gain nothing uh, and I lose out on I don't know what. Another norm uh, that developed within this community, when I first published the project, I posted a picture of myself playing the instrument. And you know, our communities are connections between people, not connections between objects. So I think it's really important to, to put the objects in context of the relationship with the person. Um, it just so happened that more people in the community started doing the same thing. You got pictures of uh, folks, kids with their fiddles and others with their cello. And it, um, it, it was a really nice norm within that community. Next, infrastructure. So this is how information travels within and without the community. And by without, I mean uh, between the community and outside. <clears throat> this is kind of like the bones of um, how everybody's talking to each other and interacting uh, upon which everything else is built. Again, autonomy, mastery, and purpose. All right, here's, here's what I did. <clears throat> you can take a closer look at this later. Um, but the main things to note, everything's kind of going back to my website, which was great, because then if I get a backlink from the White House or whoever, um, that really bumps up my SEO, so I'm trying to start a business, and that's really helpful. Um, one thing that wasn't so great, a lot of people are on Thingiverse. It wasn't the first place I posted files. Um, but a lot of the community is there, and even if you don't want to be somewhere, if that's where your people are, sometimes you have to do that. Um, we had a split, and we had people on Thingiverse, and we had people in the Google group, um, and these two communities weren't really talking to each other. Um, and that did a couple of things. One, these people lose the opportunity to connect with those people, and two, somebody has to kind of go back and forth to help address issues and encourage and do whatnot. And that somebody is me, where if these two could talk to each other, we'd save a lot of time. So here's a revised infrastructure. Um, the main change here, and I don't know if I would do exactly this, but um, I'm going back to the website and then not necessarily linking out to a place like Thingiverse, but instead directing everyone to one platform uh, to use for communication. Feedback. <clears throat> so feedback is the information traveling within the community. So we're not talking outside, we're just talking in the community. This is including highlights and rewards, highlights of people's work and reward for the, the participation. Again, what can we do here to encourage autonomy, mastery, and purpose? So. Feedback in a project like this includes other people making the instrument. It includes critical emails that I might get. Uh, it includes uh, new instruments, other remixes. Uh, there are a bunch of different ways that feedback can happen. So there's this cool loop that I noticed. Um, and I think pr probably most of you might notice this in your projects as well. So let's start in the top right. Public discussion and highlights of others' work engages people outside the community. So that happens. Those people that are engaged, they join your community. Then 
You give them or they receive immediate positive feedback from joining the community. So for me, that looked mostly like me with open arms, being excited that they were there, um, pointing them in the right direction for what they're trying to do, uh, and offering whatever help I can provide. Those folks, because they get this immediate positive feedback from joining, they're engaged and they go to contribute. So then there's internal feedback. This is what I get most excited about. You get internal feedback in the way of makes, remixes, and new instruments all together. Then we discuss, we highlight these things, and you're back to the beginning, where because of that highlighting, because of that discussion, more people are, are seeing the project, there's more visibility, and you start over. So this is, this is a really cool thing, um, and it, it definitely happened. Ah, community members are your customers. I think that's, that's key for me to remember is that I may be making a product or doing something else that makes me money, but the community members are really the customers when it comes to this, to this project. That's what's going to make this project successful. <clears throat> so mastery can be realized in the pursuit of improving a design. Um, so if you were to take this project, you were to uh, try to change the design to be lighter or more efficient in some way, you might find mastery in the use of some new CAD tool or some CAD tool you already knew. You might find mastery in actually improving the instrument. Uh, there are a couple of ways to do that. And you as the project creator or manager, you can encourage that by leaving some low-hanging fruit. So in the case of this instrument, the, the bulk of stress in the instrument is taken up by a steel rod. It's really heavy. Um, one of the first makes, he just, instead of a steel rod, he used a carbon fiber rod. So he's able to pretty dramatically improve the instrument without changing the CAD, without having to do anything different with his prints, um, and he's able to contribute to the project um, really easily. Another example, not low-hanging fruit, but constraints. The parts are big. There are a lot of smaller printers that can't print these parts. So despite the initial outcry and maybe critical emails that I got, folks pretty quickly took the files, modified them, and then we had things that could be printed on smaller printers. Um, not only was that work I didn't have to do, but that brings more people into this, this really active, really engaged community. So low-hanging fruit and constraints. There were, I don't know how many makes, but there were lots of makes. Uh, there were quite a number of improvements to the instrument. Uh, there were new sizes of violins. There were new instruments altogether, acoustics, cellos. Um, I, feel, I feel really good about what happened with the project, um, and it, it couldn't have happened without this engaged community. Uh, in addition, I was able to, to start a business and support a family and do those things that help me get by so I can start new projects. Um, and that all happened by embracing this infrastructure norms and <clears throat> oh, what's the other one? feedback mechanisms. Um, and also, too, thinking about things in terms of intrinsic motivation. So what, what can we do as project creators, as project managers, to maximize the intrinsic motivation of members of the community. So I would encourage all of you to, whether you participate in a project, whether you're starting a project, or whether you are managing an existing community, go back, look at what you're doing, look at your community, think about those things, autonomy, mastery, and purpose, think about infrastructure norms and feedback mechanisms, um, and just be intentional about how that's all set up. Um, there's some things I did for this that I should have done a lot earlier, um, and I'd like to encourage all of you to do that now so that we can get closer to the future where everybody knows what open source hardware is um, and we all have engaged communities. And that way, your project, it can either succeed pretty quickly or it can fail really quickly. Um, both are, are super valuable. 
I think that's it. Thank you.